Hello everyone, I am so glad that you are back with me today. I have our chat pack question for the day. We're only gonna do one this week. So the question I would like you guys to answer and just talk a little bit more about is this. What is your favorite party you have ever attended? Since we only have one, I would really like you guys to talk about it in detail. Why did you like it so much and what made it special to you? For me, my favorite party that I have ever attended is our adoption party that we had for our daughter Hazel. It took us about two years to adopt her through the foster care system and so it was so exciting and emotional to be able to finally celebrate her being a Hawkins and being officially a part of the family. She was a part of our family as soon as she stepped through the doors so to be able to actually include her with our last name was just really meaningful to me. So that's my answer. I hope that you guys had a good time talking about that. Well, today we are going to continue focusing in on God. When we focus in on God, we take a closer look at our faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. We might not be able to see God, but we can look all around us and see that he is with us. We can see the way that he moves in the people around us and in our lives, and he gives us what we need, which is so awesome. Today, we're going to continue talking about Saul, also known as Paul. Last week, we talked about how Saul had begun traveling to Damascus. You see, he got special permission from the high priest to travel to the city of Damascus and arrest followers of Jesus. See, Saul was this scary guy to the people that followed Jesus. Stories about him had spread to a lot of different places. But as Saul traveled to Damascus, something big happened. Jesus himself appeared to Saul in a bright light from heaven. The light blinded Saul, and the men that were with him had to lead him into town. God told him that he needed to go to a man's house by the name of Judas, and he was to wait there and see what God wanted him to do next. There was another Jesus follower in Damascus, and his name was Ananias. Ananias was about to become a hero. God called out to Ananias in a vision. We're going to read in our Bible exactly what God said to Ananias. So I want you guys to get your Bible, and I want you to turn to Acts chapter 9, and we are going to be reading verses 11 and 12. This is what God had to say to Ananias. The Lord had told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street. Ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying. In a vision, Saul has seen a man come and place his hands on him. That man's name is Ananias. In the vision, Ananias placed his hands on Saul so he could see again. Ananias was probably a little shocked and confused at what God had to say. You see, he had heard all about Saul, and I'm sure that he was a little scared to actually go and help this guy, and a little confused as to why God wanted him to be there with him, especially when Saul was known for arresting and hurting followers of Jesus. God, sensing that Ananias was not okay, actually goes on to encourage him. So we're going to read a few more verses. Uh, this is going to be Acts 9, and we're going to read verses 15 and 16. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, I have chosen this man to work for me. He will announce my name to the Gentiles and to their kings. He will also announce my name to the people of Israel. You see, even though Saul was known for being this scary guy, God had a plan. He wasn't going to let Saul continue down this path. He was about to turn Saul into a hero too. Ananias goes and he meets Saul while he is praying and he places his hands on him. When he does this, something like scales fall from Saul's eyes. He's able to see again. Saul is immediately able to go and be baptized. Saul was a relentless person. That means that he was never going to give up. That's part of what made him so scary when he was trying to hunt down believers of Jesus. He would stop 
at nothing. But the amazing thing is that when he became a believer of Jesus, he was still relentless, but he was relentless in sharing the good news of Jesus. Within days, Saul was teaching in Jewish synagogues. He was going around and telling everybody that Jesus was the Son of God. He started stirring people up, and of course that got the attention of the other religious leaders. Saul suddenly realized that he was in danger, the same way that other believers of Jesus had been in trouble when Saul came around. Saul knew that he was going to be in danger, but there were a group of Jesus' followers who had a plan. They reached out to Saul and they actually helped Saul escape. They lowered him through this opening in the wall, in this basket, so that he could escape the religious leaders and not be in danger, at least not at that moment. Saul continued to travel to different places and tell people about Jesus. Saul knew that it was risky telling people about Jesus. But after he met Jesus and truly knew who he was, he had no choice. He wanted to make sure that everybody met Jesus. There was only one problem. People were still afraid of Saul. In their minds, he was still this scary guy that was traveling around and arresting them. People didn't believe him when he said that he was now following Jesus too. There was another believer named Barnabas. Barnabas had heard Saul's full story and started telling other believers of Jesus that Saul was for real. He told them all about how Jesus had appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus and that Saul had completely turned his life around. Because of Barnabas, other believers started believing that Saul was a different person. The other believers, like Peter, accepted Saul into the family. Saul continued to preach boldly the good news of Jesus. But once again, the religious leaders were out to get him. Believers once again helped him escape. You see, Saul knew something really important. Knowing Jesus can help you face your fears. Saul knew that he might be in danger preaching the good news of Jesus, but it was that important to him. He also knew that Jesus was going to help calm his fears and do the things that he had asked him to do. Saul wasn't the only person that faced their fears in our story today. And Ananias had to face his fear of going to Saul, who he thought was surely going to hurt him. Or how about Barnabas, who had to speak up and defend Saul, knowing that people might not believe him. And that can be a scary thing. Maybe for us, it's forgiving a friend that's hurt us. That used to be our friend that's not our friend anymore, but they would like to be our friend again. That can be scary. Or maybe we're fearful of what people think about us. We might not be fearful the same way that Saul and Barnabas and Ananias were fearful, but everybody gets scared sometimes. Knowing Jesus helps us face our fears. He can give us the strength and the courage that we need to make it through the day. Our Bible story image for the day is Ananias placing his hands on Saul. I hope that you guys can remember that knowing Jesus helps you face your fears. Just like Ananias had to go help the very person that was known for arresting people just like him. You and I can have the same kind of faith that the people in our Bible story today had. They faced their fears because they had Jesus in their heart. Knowing Jesus gives us the courage that we need. He can give you the faith that you need to make it through. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for how you help us. Thank you for sending us Jesus and giving us the strength that we need to face our fears. God, help us to remember that fear shouldn't hold us back, that you are with us, and that we could go courageously forward. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys, you know the drill. Your family activity is going to be on the screen. I hope you have a great week. See you next time.